Jesus spoke of a time of great tribulation. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. We also know that there will be a rapture of the church, the house of God, the saints. Those who died in Christ will be resurrected from sleep in their graves with immortal spiritual bodies. At the same time, those in Christ who had not died will also receive immortal spiritual bodies. Then they, together with those who were resurrected, will rise to meet Christ in the air. The Apostle Paul described this. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Here's another description. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Can we determine if the rapture occurs before, or after, or during the Great Tribulation? Well, yes, we can. We have clues in Matthew 24, 1 Corinthians 15, and Revelation that give a clear answer. Revelation is particularly helpful because it portrays end-time events in sequential order written on a figurative rolled-up scroll. The contents of the scroll are divided into seven sequential groups. And those groups are separated by seals, which must be broken or opened one after another for each of the seven groups to be unrolled and read to occur. For example, the first seal must be broken before its events can take place. Then the second seal must be opened for the second set of events to take place, etc. The seventh final seal is subdivided into seven figurative trumpet soundings. As each trumpet sounding occurs, another set of events within the seventh seal begins to take place. The seven trumpet soundings resemble the seven trumpet soundings just before the city of Jericho fell. In Revelation, they announce the fall of that great city, Babylon, that mighty city. The religious, educational, commercial, and governmental systems of our world. This figurative Babylon will be replaced by the kingdom of God here on earth. Okay, back to the rapture. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, quoted earlier, we have one of the clues we need. The rapture occurs at the last trump the seventh of the seven trumpet soundings that comprise the seventh seal. Here's that passage again. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed any moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Let's do a timeline to show the order of events. Here we see the opening of the sixth seal, followed by the opening of the seventh seal. At the opening of the seventh seal, the seven trumpets begin sounding, beginning with the first. The rapture occurs at the last trump, so we'll put it here. So when does the last trump occur? Is it before, or during, or after the Great Tribulation? Well, two clues found in Matthew 24 and Revelation 6 give us the answer. Let's go to Matthew 24, verse 29. And here we see that the sun is temporarily darkened immediately after the tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now comes the piece that finishes the puzzle. 
The same darkening of the sun is mentioned here in Revelation. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as that cloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. So we'll put the darkening of the sun just after the opening of the sixth seal. The sun is darkened at the opening of the sixth seal, so we know that the tribulation is over or ending at the time the sixth seal is being opened. So we'll put the great tribulation here immediately before the sixth seal is open. We know that the rapture occurs at the last trump of the seventh seal. Obviously, then, the rapture occurs sometime after the tribulation has ended. All the events of the sixth seal and the first six trumpets of the seventh seal must occur after the tribulation but before the rapture at the last trump. The rapture is clearly post-tribulation, not mid-tribulation, not pre-tribulation. Some challenge this, saying the rapture takes place before the Antichrist peace comes to power. Well, that is obviously incorrect. The beast makes war on the saints, so the saints are still here. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power is given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. The beast is called the little horn here in Daniel 7, and makes war with the saints. And I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. The time and times and the dividing of time is understood to be three and a half years. And according to Revelation 13 verse 5, the Antichrist beast is in power for 42 months, three and a half years. We have more evidence that the beast is in power before the rapture. The very first mention of the beast in Revelation is during the sixth trumpet of the seventh seal, before the rapture at the seventh trumpet. In the sixth trumpet, the beast kills the two witnesses. The two witnesses' testimony, like fire proceeding from their mouths, had been devouring or destroying the credibility of those attempting to hurt or discredit their testimony. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So we'll put the beast kills two witnesses here in the sixth trumpet. This time of the two witnesses and the beast is likely the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth. Everyone will have to decide whether they will accept and follow the truth or swallow the sweet-tasting false narrative dictated by the beast. The battle for the mind will rage as it never has before. Others challenge the post-tribulation rapture, saying God will never let his people suffer his wrath, the tribulation. Well, the answer to that is simple. The tribulation is not God's wrath. The tribulation is over long before God's wrath comes. God's wrath falls on those who had the mark of the beast after the tribulation has ended, after the beast has come to power, and after the rapture has taken place. God will not let his people suffer his wrath. The saints will be raptured at the seventh trumpet just before the wrath of God is poured out upon the men which had the mark of the beast. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went, and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. On the timeline, we'll put the wrath of God after the beast has come to power, sixth trumpet, and after the church has been raptured at the last trump. The beast will continue for some time after the rapture. 
after the rapture and during the subsequent wrath of God, the beast and his armies gather at a place called Armageddon in preparation for the battle of that great day of God Almighty. They apparently gather in an attempt to prevent Jesus with his resurrected immortal saints from arriving to take control of Jerusalem. We'll add beast and armies gather to the timeline. But Jesus, accompanied by his saints, will come and defeat the beast and his armies, apparently at Jerusalem. This is described in Revelation 19 verses 11 through 21 and in other passages. So we'll put that here in the timeline. We can be sure the saints will be with Jesus as he defeats the beast. They will always be with him following their rapture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall cut up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. What will the saints be doing with Jesus after the rapture, before they accompany him to Jerusalem? Apparently they will be enjoying the marriage supper of the Lamb, while the wrath of God is being poured out on earth. Revelation mentions the marriage supper only once, just before Jesus comes with his saints to defeat the beast and its armies. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. So we can add the marriage feast to the timeline. After destroying the beast and his armies, Jesus will rule the kingdom of God here on earth. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. The resurrected immortal saints will inherit the kingdom of God and rule with Jesus. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years.